I am sure you've seen the ads, monday.com sales CRM. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining exactly how to use it. I'll be going over leads, deals, contacts, and accounts. I'll also be explaining the pricing. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help with monday.com training or setup, check out the link below. We would love to help. Now let's head over to arguably the most complicated part of the monday.com sales CRM, and that is in fact the pricing, okay? So you can see here we've got a number of different options. We've got basic, standard, and pro, but often the first question we get is, how does the user system work? So on the left-hand side here, you've got choose team size, and this is a number of seat options. Seats are essentially users, okay? So the minimum number of seats you can have is three, going up to five, and then 10. The annoyance of this is you cannot, let's say, have six seats. If you need six seats, you do in fact have to pay for 10 seats. Uh, the benefit of that is, I suppose, relatively speaking, monday.com sales CRM is not particularly expensive, um, but that is an annoyance um, and we get a lot of queries around that. So hopefully that clears that up. One, one seat is one user, so three seats is three users, so on and so forth. Now, comes, coming over to package, my recommendation really is to just go for the professional version of uh, monday.com sales CRM. The basics good and very cheap, very cost effective. Standard again is okay. I think you really get the most features and benefits from the professional version and for the price difference, which is relatively insignificant, um, I would recommend going for the professional version. Professional version will give you access to mass emailing, which is unbelievably popular, a very in-demand feature, which I'm sure you can imagine. Um, you also get the formula column, which when used correctly can be very, very powerful. You also have up to 25,000 automations per month. So that's actions per month, whereas on the standard, you only have 250. That's the same for integrations as well. So for the small price difference, I would recommend going for the professional version. Now, once you sign up to your monday.com sales CRM, it will look just like this, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through exactly what each of these areas is designed to do. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how to actually use the functionality. There is another video up here which you are more than welcome to go ahead and watch that will show you more of the in-depth functionality of monday.com generally. This is just a video specific to monday.com sales CRM. So firstly, we are on the leads area. Now what exactly is leads and what's the difference between leads and deals? In a nutshell, Leads are pre-qualified sales inquiries. What do I mean by that? Leads are people that have inquired about your product or service, but you've not necessarily worked out if they're a good fit for your product or service, if they, um, if they can afford your product or service, if you particularly want to work with them, and that leads may be people that you can't necessarily get in touch with. So that's where you would put all of your inquiries that are new business related. You would funnel them all into the leads area, um, and then you, with an attempt or with the hope to actually qualify those leads. Once they are then qualified, they are then converted over to the deals area where you would go ahead and manage the sales process. So leads area is where you would handle the lead qualification area. Or well, yeah, you would look to qualify your leads from the leads area, of course. Another good example or way of understanding is leads area is for appointment setters, Deals area is for closers, okay? Super, super simple. So new leads will populate, you'll have their name here, you'll have the status of the lead, so new lead, attempted contact, contacted, qualified or unqualified. Of course, you can add additional columns on the right-hand side if you'd like to, to track business-specific data, like the product they might be interested in, or if you can track the source that they came from, so on and so forth. I would also look to add a few additional groups, maybe add two groups, one for qualified, one for unqualified, and then maybe even write some automations to say when status is equal to qualified, move item to group qualified. Weirdly enough, this is not stuff that monday.com provide automatically, but when added is really, really helpful. So I would bear that in mind. Now, a couple of additional things that I will show you that is um, monday.com sales CRM functionality. This is, you have access to this across the entire system, but I'll just demonstrate it on the leads area, try and give you as much value as I can as quickly as possible. If you go ahead and select one or even two of the leads, you will have this email option down the bottom here. If you click that email, this will allow you to mass email your leads. Now, if you've got a list of two or 200, you can go ahead and do exactly the same thing and press email. I believe, and I might be wrong, but I believe there is a limit to 500 mass emails per selection. So you can't select more than 500 people to mass email at any given time, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. 
Now, one other important piece of functionality is if you hover over the hover over this uh, speech bubble with the plus button in it, go ahead and click that option. You'll be presented with this screen here. Now, this will allow you to manage the pipeline, whichever pipeline it is, whether it be deals or leads. In this instance, it's of course leads, or if there is no pipeline at all, this is where you can also add um, activities, so manage your activities with that particular lead and also send them additional emails. You'll see an email chain here when you've connected your email account to your monday.com sales CRM. Very, very uh, useful feature. I would strongly recommend looking to do that. We also have updates at the top here. Now, I like to describe this as kind of like an internal uh, monday.com Twitter. What you can do is write an update to your colleagues about a particular lead. So you can say, I've spoken with Nick, for example. Then you can at, literally like Twitter, at someone else in the organization that has a user inside of monday.com. Um, and then they'll be able to see it. They can then respond back. They can like it, dislike it, emojis. All of that jazz is available to access using that speech bubble there. Um, you're aware about the, um, of course, in, uh, of course, adding the columns. With the basic functionality in monday.com, they do provide a form as well. You can go ahead and use this form. You can share it. Um, and if you go ahead and embed it, which you can do, um, you are then able to put that, let's say, on your website. Um, and you can then have people submit directly from your website into the uh, leads area of your monday.com sales CRM. Not something that I would recommend. I would use uh, alternative form capture methods or lead capture methods but um, whatever works best for you. So now you're aware of what the leads area is, I would then head over to the deals area. And in order to qualify a lead, unfortunately this is not inherently set up in monday.com, but you would need to connect this button with your contacts area inside of monday.com and then connect it to your deal. So I'll walk you through that. What would happen is you press move to contacts, that would create a new contact record inside of monday.com. You would then head over to your deals area, create a new deal. Um, so I'm just going to do Nick Boardman as an example. And then you would look to associate the contact that has been automatically created with that particular deal. So that's how this works. And then you would associate, let's say, Phoenix Levy with this particular deal. Um, and if you go to the contacts area, which I'll come on to in a moment's time, you'll be able to see what that looks like. So what is deals? Deals is the actual sales process. And this is where you manage the start. So not the new inquiry, but the qualified inquiry to either closed one or closed lost. Uh, super, super simple. You've got the different stages here. Again, you're more than welcome to adjust these to your liking, whatever's going to be suitable for you. Of course, you will end up having a one or a lost. Um, you will probably notice again, monday.com have not added a closed lost, unfortunately. So I'd probably recommend adding that as a new group, which I'll just demonstrate quickly. Maybe change the color to red. Unfortunately, as much as it pains me to say, we all lose deals, um, sad times, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so you're going to need that there as well. You could also set up an automation to say when status is equal to closed lost, move item to group closed lost. But whatever you want to do, that's entirely up to you. You have the deal area, again, stages, the owner of the deal, the value of the deal, the contact related to the deal, so the person that you're communicating with to sell to them. Again, the same principle applies. If you want to add additional columns to your deals area, you are more than welcome to. I would strongly recommend doing it because this is very, very basic. You want to track as much information as possible about your deals, uh, where the product they're interested in, where they've come from, there's a lead source, so on and so forth. There's so many things that you could go into there. We also have some pre-created views. We've got the Kanban view. I'm a massive fan of the Kanban view. Just makes it a lot easier to manage your deals as opposed to looking at, at them in that kind of almost Excel-esque view. You can go to the Kanban view and drag and drop from one stage to another. Super, super easy. And that will, of course, update on the actual uh, main table page there. And you can see that you're just changing the status of the process. We also have forecasting. So if you do have any of this set up, um, you will have to obviously add in your forecasting. Then this will show you your sales forecasts in your deals area, which of course, is very, very helpful. Everyone wants to know uh, the forecasted sales for the years and so on and so forth in the months. So once you're familiar with the deals area, we then have contacts. And just to reiterate, this is the sales process. So you're going from discovery to close one or close lost. Then we have contacts. Contacts are literally just people. 
Um, so every contact will work through for an organization, which is an account. So account is organization, contact is person. You can see here that you will have deals associated with that particular contact. Now there are gonna be instances where you are selling B2C, but you are managing them in a CRM system. So you might not necessarily need the, the accounts area, but you can create a link between accounts and contacts. I would probably recommend doing that, to be honest with you. Just so, from a contact level, you know exactly which contacts work for which accounts. But you can see here, we've got Phoenix Levy. There are two deals associated with this particular person, and that's his total deal value. So that's a mirror column, and I believe it'll probably be, if I go to customize mirror column, it'll be, a, oh, it's not selected, but if I select sum, that'll be a sum of all of his deals. Um, and you'll be able to see his, I suppose, contact value, but we shouldn't ever perceive someone in that way, but you know, that, da <laughs> that data is available to you. So these are your contacts, and of course, like I said, these will be generated from the leads area. It would create a new contact when you set up that button, um, and then you'd create a new deal and associate that particular contact with that deal. You, uh, you've got another view, we've got a card option here, which just literally just shows you a bit of data. Um, again, I will say this again for the third time in this video, please, please, please add additional columns just to track um, everything else. You can see here that you can add the account so you can see which account is associated with which contact, like I mentioned moments ago. You've got title, um, company, but I would also add additional information that you need to track. Might be an address, for example, might be their VAT number for, an, for on an account level, might be their personal phone and their work phone. There's so much information that you, you should track in your CRM system. So make it as bespoke to your business as possible. It's super, super easy to do so. So moving on from contacts, we have accounts. Now accounts is literally businesses like I've mentioned. Again, same principle applies. Basic information is available. You can go ahead and add more. You can add the core CRM columns or the more columns and add additional information to track for your accounts, accounts literally being businesses or organizations that you work with. So hopefully you're familiar with the leads, deals, contacts and accounts area. I'm just gonna show you activities as well. So you can create activities. This is kind of like a to-do list, very, very similar. Um, you've got account activities. You can group them by account, contact, lead and deal. Um, what you would then look to do, let's say I need to do an activity for a deal. I'll just go ahead and say call Nick Boardman, just as an example. And then what you, what option you've got here is really, really clever. If you select this, this is where you can associate your activity with another record inside of the system. So you would associate your activity with a lead or a deal. What you have here is a drop down menu of the different areas. So let's say I need to associate this particular activity with a deal. You can go ahead and select that and that will show you all of your deals. And I'm select it, select the, the Nick Boardman deal to say call Nick Boardman. Um, and then we've got start time, end time, what the status of this particular activity is. And then we've got the activity type as well, whether it's a meeting, a phone call, call summary. You can again, please adjust this according to what works for you and your particular organization. Um, the really simple to manage. We've got the dashboard up the top here, which shows activity types, this month activity progress, and we've got monthly activities that were done and then, then a count of graph um, of the number of activities that were done per month. Again, please adjust this to your liking, but hopefully this just provides some useful information to get you started and get you managing your data inside of the system. Moving on from activities, we have this getting started page. I've essentially got you started, <laughs> but at least I hope I have anyway. Um, if you have any additional questions, I'm sure there'll be some useful stuff here, or you can check out my channel as well, which provides loads of content. Um, and then finally, we have the sales dashboard. Now this is gonna provide insightful information about your sales, your sales process, average value of one deals, actual revenue, active deals in the pipeline. You've got monthly goal, your sales pipeline, forecasted revenue by month, forecasted revenue by stage, deals stages by rep, actual revenue by month, deal progress based on month added. There's so much information here and there's so much you can add as well. Um, you can go ahead and press the edit button and add additional widgets if you wanna see numbers, average values, uh, so on and so forth. I'm absolutely certain this data is gonna be valuable to you as a business owner or sales manager, sales director, or just a sales representative. So I would leverage having this information to as much as you possibly can. Now, hopefully you're familiar with the sales CRM that monday.com provides. Just to recap, leads are pre-qualified sales inquiries. 
deals are the actual sales process of a qualified inquiry to close one or close lost. We've got contacts, which are people, accounts, which are businesses, and activities, which are tasks that you could do in association with a lead, a deal, account, or a contact. And then we've got the sales dashboard to see data on the performance of your business. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.